It's exactly eight after the R6 on the mighty Metro FM. Thank you so much. The festive mood that is Touch and the Gang. They do it again tomorrow between three and six. Such fun listening to that show. It, it, it puts me in that, uh, in that spirit. Yeah, it puts you there to say, hi, man. Even if you're coming from the office, you realize, no, as soon as I step out, get December. Giddy Zemba, welcome to it. Thanks so much for choosing us and joining us. This is Sports That Amplified with Andile. My name is Andile Ngube. A little bit later on, I'll be telling you about the games that are playing today in the DSTV Premiership, as well, of course, as uh, checking in on last night's result in uh, the Champions League. Guys, there's no need to call me and laugh at me. And I didn't watch. I don't watch Man United at the moment. I've taken a break from Man United. I have kids that I care for that uh, need my heart in full working order so no i did not watch but yes i'm very well well aware of the results and i'll be sharing those with you but our conversations today stem from what you guys asked us and i'll play the voice note that asked us to get the technical director of uh, the south african football association on the line he's not in the country but mr steenbach walter decided hey man guys i know but i'm coming on I'm going to answer these questions. I will come on and I say to you that if there's one person at Safa who will not run away from questions, it's a TD. He's here with us uh, via Zoom all the way. um, I think he's in Marrakesh. Timmy, where is he? He's in Morocco, yeah? Yeah, he's in Marrakesh. So he'll be coming to us direct from Morocco and we'll talk to him about all things South African Football Association in his department. And then the second conversation we're going to be having today, you don't want to go anywhere. This is a voice you have not heard on the airwaves anywhere on television in a very long time does the name jimmy agusti mean anything to you former chairman of bloemfontein celtic will be joining us is celtic coming back are we most likely to have jimmy back in top flight football in the next season the rumors are rife two teams in the dscb premiership are trying to get out they're saying nope Enough is enough. We want to sell. That's what the rumors are. And I, I mean, I, I followed it up and, hey, it's hard to run away from that right now. But Jimmy will talk to us about the one he's interested in. Or if he's interested in any at all. I mean, the one is not paying players. Players at Swallows have not been paid. They're struggling to pay players at Morocco Swallows at the moment. Steve Compella doing all that he can with players that are unpaid. The salary struggle continues. And, you know, it's easy. I'd love to point fingers at at, at, at Solos and be like, yeah, look at what you're doing. But it's not easy for DSTV Premiership teams. Corporate South Africa, for some reason, for some reason, when it comes to football, local football, there seems to be an issue. And I'd love to get to the bottom of it because... This is the biggest sport in the country and this is the biggest platform for sport in the country. There's nothing bigger in sport in this country than the DSTV Premiership. But yet, you have teams struggling to put one and one together, to put ends meet together, to pay their players. And you look at how many teams have big sponsorships in the DSTV Premiership. So I sympathize with them. I really do. And it's brought us here. The second break, when we come back, TD at Safa joins us for a conversation. Walter Steenbock is with us, and then Jimmy Agusti will join us for a conversation. Sports Night Amplified with Andile on Metro FM. Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. It's exactly 14 after the hour 6, and uh, we, we, we love um, having uh, conversations with you. We absolutely love it when you get involved in the show because it proves to us that you feel a part of the show. Yesterday, we had two people that called in and said, hey, Andile, man, these are the conversations. And also, you know very well that if we don't tackle those conversations at the level that we tackle them at here on Sports Night Amplified with Andy on the Mighty Metro FM, brought to you proudly by SABC Sport, there's nowhere else where it can be handled in that way. So yesterday, one of the calls that came in um, asked for us to get the technical director of the South African Football Association, a man that is always available, and not only to us, but he's always available to the media. He's always available to take calls and answer questions. But firstly, let me play you that clip. 
<laughs> Otherwise, we'll ring for dinner. Yeah, good, man. I just wanted to ask you, uh, Andile Kore, uh, maybe you should also consider to have a staffer come to, to, to tell us if what they are going mm. to do mm. to help these coaches uh, get these qualifications. Are they going to offer them buzzeries and so forth? You know what? That we can have because um, that's the one part of Safa that's willing to have interviews uh, because that's under Walter Steenbock. And, and he's very he, open. He, about he the very topic. open. He yeah. faces everything straight on. So we'll definitely speak to him. I thought you were going to ask me to get the president or the CEO. Ah. Well, that's the team. Those people domain. run. No, that's a TD's domain. So, and so he's I'll speak very to happy the TD. to talk about it. We might just have him tomorrow. So listen tomorrow. Oh. If it, um, when I'm, we'll see if we can have him tomorrow. Well, there it is. Uh, you guys asked for it, and the TDs, yeah. Technical Director of the South African Football Association, Mr. Walter Steenbock, now joining us all the way from Morocco. Coach, uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, it's always great to have you. How's Morocco? Yeah, thanks, Andile, and also thanks to uh, the South African football community and also Metro uh, listeners. Uh, Morocco has been great, um, even though I'm struggling a little bit. I'll, I'm, I'm coming from the uh, FIFA technical leadership diploma that I attend with FIFA in Japan, and I came through uh, via Paris, and I lost my bag. So I'm here uh, literally without without my bag for for the last four days. But otherwise, everything has been has been wonderful. Uh, the Football Association of Morocco um, has really done everything in their powers to make sure that the the boys and the technical team and also the support staff, you know, are well taken care of. And uh, and look, yesterday we played our first international game at under 15 level, where the boys really put up a, a very interesting interesting uh, fight against Cote d'Ivoire, uh, where we lost 4-2. Uh, but it's all system go. You know, today they had the regeneration at the beach. Uh, then we building up for the game on the 17th against against uh, Morocco under 15. Did you get an opportunity? I can imagine since Utinneskipa uh, say Ufita Morocco, maybe you didn't have clothes to attend the awards. But did you have an opportunity to attend the awards? No, no, no. The the, the awards are in. Uh, uh, I think they were in uh, in Marrakesh. Uh, we are in Rabat. Oh, are you in Rabat? Uh, yeah, we are in Rabat. Yeah, so we are in a small place called Bushniki. Which is about uh, thirty minutes mm. from uh, from the Mohammed uh, Fifth uh, uh, Complex, you know, in Rabai in Saleh. So, so it was it was it was unfortunate that I had to concentrate on this one. But look, the the the, the president was also around yesterday to give the boys and moral support, you know, and and really see the 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 work that we are beginning for for the national association. I mean, that's brilliant, and I appreciate especially getting an update on what our under-15s are doing because for a very long time we've been complaining about the consistency in games and in international fixtures and exposure for our lower um, uh, unders. But uh, the conversation we want to have, it stems from you know, the conversations in and around what uh, Safa has said in the PSL and coaches and coaching badges and there being a requirement for a certain minimum in order to to coach in the DSTV Premiership, which is something that I know from the get-go, even though you were under siege for saying it, it's something that you've been championing for a long time. Uh, look, Andy, um, we need to we need to have the right perspective uh, for 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 this kind of of a situation. Uh, when I said this, uh, it was very really unfortunate. But you'll remember in 2013. Um, the the previous technical director, Mr. Lesoaka, had already advocated uh, for certain standards uh, that must that must prevail uh, within within the game, you know. But uh, when I came when I came uh, in, uh, into the picture, you know, my idea was very clear: was that it doesn't have to to only be at the professional level. So the regulations that we have suggested and which have been passed by the NEC cuts across. You know, it starts uh, with the with, with the PSL, the, the National First Division. It goes to the Hollywood Bet Super League. It gets to ABC Multiple League. It gets to the Regional League. It gets to USA football, you know, goes to the local football association. Uh, so, and schools football also, you know, including, including academies on all of that. So it's a comprehensive plan that we have put up there, you know, just to, to get the regulations back. But again, if you look at 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 what it is, it, these are just CAF uh, club licensing regulations. So these are not SAFA uh, uh, club licensing. So these are the these are the expectations and and the guidelines which are put up by CAF, you know, as the controlling confederation, you know, in Africa of football. So we as a member association, you know, uh, we have a duty also to be able to regulate because already across the border in Zambia, uh, in Botswana and in Lesotho. 
you know, these regulations have been passed, but for us and for me specifically, you know, as somebody uh, who has been tasked with the architectural uh, uh, thinking for the association, it was important that we have to align ourselves and really go uh, for, this, uh, for these regulations. What are these regulations exactly, and what is the proposed time and date in which they must be passed in South Africa then? So, so, so key thing, Andy, and I'm glad you're asking this, is that, for example, in the Premier Soccer League and in the National First Division, you know, we expect coaches uh, in the beginning of 2024, 2025, uh, to have an A license if we are a head coach and a B license uh, for an assistant coach. But also on top of that, you know, teams in the NFD and, uh, and also in, in the PSL need to have a minimum of two junior teams, you know, boys and girls who are, who are registered within the local football association from the start of, of 20, 2024, 2025. So, of course, it could have been articulated that maybe the vice president really spoke about uh, the qualification that is needed there. But also central to this is also that teams also in the PSL and the NFD have to be anchored in the local football association. So they need to have a, a foundation within the local football association. So if you are, a, you are, you are for example, a team X who is playing in the PSL, you can only uh, be a team that is playing in the, in, in the Premier League, but you are not anchored in a community where you are based. So that is very, very important. But also central to this is that international coaches' qualification and requirements you know, if you are an international coach, you need to have a UEFA Pro license or a CAF A. And as if you're an assistant, you need to have a CAF B. But again, you need to have five years coaching experience at a professional level. And you should have won a cup or a league in the last seven years from the start of the 2024-2025 season. So Hold on. Is this, this, is, this, is, this is for if you're an international coach coming into South Africa and you want to coach here, you need to have a minimum of what you've just labeled now. Cap exactly. A, Pro exactly. License, UEFA Pro License, you need to have won a trophy in the last five years in whichever league that you come from. Yes, so 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 this is this will, will, will be coaches who are coming next season. You know, but if you're already in the league, you know, at least the, the, the regulation saves you. But if you are a new coach who is an international coach, either coming from Zambia or you are coming from Puerto Rico or whatever, this this regulation will please will give them to us again please give them to us again so if you're an international coach you're not south african you're not in south africa yet you're coming in so for teams that are looking for coaches or are going to be getting new coaches these are the regulations and the minimums that you need to have please just go through them again there td yeah let me just read it again so if you're an international coach uh, your qualification and requirements is that if you are a head coach you need a uefa pro license or you need a kef a license hmm. and if you're an assistant you need a kef b you know, that's fine. But again, you need five years coaching experience at professional level. And you need to have won a league or a cup in the last seven years. Wow. From the start of the 2024-2025. So if you are not already in the country working and you are a new guy coming in, these regulations will affect you immediately. Wow. So that is, that I am is very happy part. to hear that. I am very happy to hear that because now uh, you're not going to get uh, people that come here from all over the world, but we don't know where they come from, what leagues they come from, and they literally chances, you know, um, in Stephen Keshi's words, they come from doing all sorts of other jobs. Uh, I don't enjoy the word, so I'm not going to say it, other jobs and come here, and all of a sudden they're soccer coaches. So that's one thing I'm proud of, and I'm happy to hear. But the one thing I worry about, and I know you've just held classes now, um, and, and I saw the likes of Eric Tinkler, um, Coach Barker, Coach Hunt as well was part of it. Is there enough time between now and August of next year for a coach that's in the DSTV Premiership currently that wants to get a CAF A license, a CAF B license, or does it work the same with international coaches? Say, so if I'm already coaching, then, you know, I'm already coaching, but any new coach can't get within. He has to have those rules. So if I'm sitting here, when I water, in other words, and I'm already a coach at uh, um, Andile FC and I don't have a CAF A or CAF B, do I get booted out of my job in order to go get those, number one? Or because I'm already here, just like with the international coaches, I stay. So it's a it's 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 it's, it's a simple process, uh, Andy. Uh, we are also going to try uh, between between July or or August 2024 and and January to have two B two B license course uh, uh, coaching courses. One will be specifically for women, that's a B license, and then one will be specifically targeting 
uh, uh, C-licensed coaches who are in the PSL and who are in, who are in the NFD. Because we are aware of the, of, of the landscape. It's not mm. that uh, when these rules were put up there, well, because once you are registered uh, as, 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 as a B uh, licensed candidate, then automatically you qualify as a coach who already has had that B license. So, so that's a, con- a, a, a consideration that you are going to make, you know. But nevertheless, um, I've, I've really been very open about this, that we already have 400 plus coaches in our database in South Africa with CAFA license, you know. I think in, in the whole of Africa, you know, and including Morocco, who has now began a process that is accelerated to have more coaches at that level, we have the numbers, you know, so we have more than 400 of these coaches who have an A license. So we don't have a crisis. And again, we have almost around 1,200 of these coaches, you know, who have already a B license, you know, both men and women, you know. So what I'm saying is that we are in a good state, you know, and when we were making this uh, this call in the beginning, the idea was, was to be able to have a P, the PSL engaging with us you know, on this matter, you know, because as a member association and and also being 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 part of, of the National Executive Committee, you know, it was important that they're also there uh, when this matter is articulated, you know, is ventilated for them to have an input on this matter, you know, because like I say, as the as the main person re, uh, in charge of the technical uh, development of the game, you know, it's it's imperative that I, I lead the association in the right way, you know, and CAF club licensing, you know, gives us, gives us an opportunity to be able to do that. And before you get to, to your next question, I also need to highlight that one of the rules also that I put up as a rule 1.5 in the technical recommendations, which were given to, to, uh, uh, to the technical committee is also that NFD clubs mm. will be also allowed to register 623 players. And, and during that period, a minimum of two can start the game and must play a minimum of 45 minutes and a maximum of 60 minutes. And 223 players must also finish the match. So these are quite some of the regulations that we are putting in there because we are aware of what's happening also in the NFD. Yeah, I mean, I've watched games in the NFD. NFD. I watched game this weekend yes, where literally like, they do what's called teabagging. You know, an under-23 player goes in for two seconds, the game kicks off, and then they take them off. So, you know, you're, you're doing things that are going to try and assist in that. But I want to just go back a little bit, and we will touch on this as well, Boresi, but I want to understand this. If I'm a coach in the DSCV Premiership right now and I don't have the requirements, which is my KEF A license is what is needed for a head coach, come deadline day, am I fired? Am I to be released? The team can't have me anymore? It's for the, it's, 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 it's for the clubs uh, to be able to deal with that matter, you know, but from our side, and you might have seen also in the in the last in the last two months that i've also taken out also a secular and i've also re- also released it to all the regions at safa regions and also in var- in various platforms um that coaches need to register and also academies need to register so uh, it's for us also to be able to update uh, uh, our numbers and understand what is happening but from where we are sitting you know we are very very clear uh, and the mandate will be very clear to the officials and will also come back uh, in 2024 uh, to, to come up with, with the final plan, how referees and also officials are going to make sure that coaches who are there, you know, are the coaches who are who are registered and who are qualified. I mean, if you check the last match, um, Sikukune against Stad Stade Malian, uh, you know, in Poloko Anide, you know, I've seen a couple of pictures there or photos né, of their head coach, uh, Stade Malian, who was sitting in the stand, mm. you know, because he doesn't have a CAF A, you know. So in order for us to be able to catch up with, with what is happening in CAF and also to be able to provide the right standard that we are looking for, for our national teams, you know, our national league, you know, it's important that it has to it has to get into the right, into, into the right direction. So basically what you're saying is, I don't care whether you fire your coach or not, he just can't sit on the bench. You can't sit on the bench. You know, you have to, you, you, you have, you have, you have going to be a contractual I mean, nightmare for the teams. I mean, if a coach is sitting there with a three, four year contract, but I guess you're saying that's for you to figure out. Exactly, Andy. Like I say, you know, um, when we articulated this, I mean, in the, uh, at the beginning of the year, you know, the idea was to, was to elicit a kind of, of, of an interaction, you know, and uh, a, a dialogue. You know with 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 the professional soccer league you know on this matter you know because 
I've checked, I've checked the, I've checked the 18 teams, for example, in the in the PSL, you know, and I can I can safely tell you that 70% of the coaches, in terms of the records that we have, 70% of the coaches are safe there, but 30 30 35% won't be safe. But like I, like I say, we'll try to make a concession from my office to be able to have a B license for coaches who need to catch up who are sitting at, at the C. You know, because some of them already are active coaches. You yeah, know, but so I mean, then that, that only the, gets them the seat as an assistant coach and not as a head coach of a team, um, uh, on paper yeah. at least. Then yes. can a coach who's yes. got a B license because he had a C that's caught up, he's got a B, can he then sit on the bench as a head coach? Because he can sit on the no, bench. No, no, he can sit on, on the bench as, a, as, 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 as an assistant, but he can't sit as, as a head coach. So like I say, his regulations uh, and the, are very, very important. And... Um, this also, you know, touches to the kind of work that I want to I want to do uh, together with 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 the uh, coach education department. You know, in in trying to help also coaches uh, who have level one and level two. You know, who also wants to have equivalence. You know, so so those are the things that we are trying to do because maybe the next question that will come. You know, what about those ones with level one and level two? So like I said, and we have spoken about this that Kev says to said to us. Uh, first, the first thing is for you to be in the convention, you know, so come back into the convention once you're in the convention and your courses uh, are being are, are being rated as being as being good. Then you can start about about accelerating, you know, and having a refresher course or equivalence course for those who have a level one and level two. But the first thing for us was to start with the A license, the B and the A license manuals are already with Kev. They've been approved. Now they're going to send somebody either in January or in March. To, have, to be able to look at, at the A license and whether we are capable of hosting such courses. Because you remember, it has been more than seven years that the association and South Africa had not been able to, to be able to host this kind of, of courses. So everything is going to happen a little bit slow, but structured and planned, you know, so that we can help everybody else. So the idea is not... Is not uh, it's, it's to improve uh, the game. I completely... Process. I, I agree with you. It, it's to improve the game. It's to improve players. I just worry about a coach who's sitting there with a C license because between now and the cutoff date, there's no ways you imp who are imposing the rules on us can offer me an A an A license. Yeah, but you must remember, and, and I'm glad for that question, Andile. But you must remember, Andile, if if you are somebody who's uh, who's vigilant and who's sensitive to your own career, you know, uh, and you really want want to be able to circumvent this and and work ahead of time. We have, a, we, have, we, have a, we have a memorandum of understanding with Botswana, with Zambia, and with Lesotho. You know, as I speak to you, Shwaib Walters and Mike Mayambel, you know, are already doing the B license courses uh, in Lesotho. You know, David Nyati and uh, um, Coach Dunga, I forgot his, his say name, uh, and Jimmy Jambo. We also facilitated for them to be able to finish the B license in Zambia. You know, and now, Simo Dladra, uh, Surprise Muriri, uh, Fabian McCarthy uh, across the border also in Botswana doing the A license courses. So there isn't really an excuse, you know, that you can't, you can't, uh, you, 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 you are not really aware of this, you know, because there's been ample opportunities for coaches to be able to go uh, in, in the neighboring countries. I mean, also um, uh, Maleka, uh, Zico Maleka, mm. uh, also uh, graduated in Zambia with 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 a B license license course because we have an we have an MOU. So when they have courses and they are well advertised, you know, and a coach thinks that you know I really need this B license, you know, it's for me as the TD to approve, you know, and try and talk to my counterparts, you know, uh, in in the three countries that I've mentioned, you know, and we have facilitated that. I mean, all of them you could call them at any time and they will tell you that they made an application. And I supported the application. In, in fact, even suggested that they could add other other candidates so that coaches can really be able to upgrade their qualifications. And, and like I said, I support a lot of this. And I think especially the international coaches coming in, to growing our local coaches, it can only be good for the game. Uh, it can only help grow the game as well. So, you know, applauds. Is there a process then where you need to speak to the PSL and the two of you need to agree on this, or has that happened and this is now sealed and then signed onto paper? I'm not sure how this, from from a SAFA point of view and, and then from a PSL point of view, how those regulations work between the two TD. Perhaps if you can educate me on that. 
Look, the, 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 the Football Association is in charge of, of football in South Africa. And at any NEC meeting, you know, um, the chairman of the league uh, is actually the vice president of the of of of, of, of the association. Mm. You know, so the PSL has, has has members who sit on the NEC, and if this matter was was discussed at an NEC meeting, you know, it is binding. You know, whether okay. the PSL was there or the PSL or, or, or uh, they were not there, you know, the, the 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 issue is binding because, like, remember. I first articulated this at the 51st uh, Congress of the South African Football Association, you know, and now uh, this has dragged now to the NEC meeting that happened, I think on the on the on the 9th of December, you know, in 2023. So look, you can you can imagine during that period from from the last Congress where this was articulated, you know, and it was a position that I really ventilated openly in the media, leading to the Congress, you know, because. The Congress is the highest decision-making body, but I was already going into into the Congress to go and convince them, you know, to be able to approve all of these amendments and regulations that that I was suggesting. But again, now, from that time up until uh, the 9th of December, you know, the onus is on the PSL, you know, and it it, it remains on them to have been part of of the deliberations at the NEC meeting because they are part of the NEC of of, of the Safa NEC, and if uh, it was passed at the NEC uh, meeting, uh, then it, it is binding and it's final. Listen, Coach, thank you so much. I mean, I think it's going to take some, uh, for, for the coaches that don't have the qualifications, it's going to take uh, from them some self-sacrifice because they might need to leave their teams at the moment mid-season to go jump into Lesotho, Botswana, or wherever a neighboring country is having licenses to go catch up. It, it does mean you know, money out of their own pockets, but also it does mean leaving your job for a little bit. I mean, we're going to need understanding team owners and teams and also willing coaches. It's, it's, it's about to be a rough time in the DCP Premiership over the next couple of months. Yes, Andy, um, I wouldn't really call it as being rough. You know, but <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking that it's a, it's, it's, it's a transformational process, you know, and uh, like I say, 70% of the coaches, when I looked at at our current stats that we have, you know, are quite fine, especially the head coaches, you know. So it's not a state of state of disaster, but it's it's an important step, you know, from 2013 that we've been dealing, dealing on this matter and and this matter, you know, lock, causes a lot of uproar in the country. I think there are a lot of issues that we really have to deal with. And if you check my approach and the technical committee committee's approach on this matter was that it must be it must be cutting across all divisions, but like I say, key things there is that we really want to uh, to be able to to transform the game even even even, even at the bottom. We want teams uh, to have junior teams. Teams in the PSL must also be affiliated in the local football association. I mean, that's how you grow the game. And of course, we had to look also at protecting uh, the the 400 coaches that we have in South Africa. You know, who are sitting at home, who don't have a job, or who or, or who can't get into the system. And but. We continuously train them and want to bring them into the system. But how do you protect jobs and how do you bring them in the system? You know, so these are the some of the things that we are grappling with. You know, as we try to uh, to readjust and reboot uh, and take the direction that is really suitable. You know, for us uh, to be able to have the the South African football uh, landscape that we really desire. South African Football Association Technical Director Walter Steinbock. We did say when he took the job, he came over here, and I said it live here: this man is going to change football as we know it he's going to grow it for the better i think these are steps towards that td we really appreciate your conversation thank you for talking to us thanks a lot uh and uh, also thank thanks for for a wonderful a uh, wonderful show a uh, merry christmas and happy new year and hopefully you come back next year uh, again really uh, rejuvenated uh, to to lead good discussions and take our our football forward thanks a lot my brother and also to your listeners i appreciate you uh, the city press i think in particular timothy mlobi wrote the story there um about uh, jimmy agusti and uh, him coming back to football former blueprint and celtics boss uh, back in football at rate and he wants to make another impact this time agusti being involved in development of the sport but you know, I then started sniffing and smelling around, man. I said, hey, let's have Jimmy on. Uh, Jimmy, of course, uh, was part of what many Siwelele fans would uh, term the heydays, the good old days of Bloemfontein Celtic. You know, he bought the team back in the day from Tata Mulemela, who he kept on uh, as an honorary chairman of the team. Uh, 
for for a large part of his life he was uh you know treated like an absolute stalwart and uh for by gold by jimmy and his team he then sold the team later on to max shabalala and when i got involved in football early on you know as as uh, uh from the television point of view he was still involved at bloom Celtic, and i used to watch in awe of what they do whenever you'd go to to bloomfontein and to the free state in particular but then again i've been a fan of football for a very long time i'd watch and i knew the owners and what they would do and he was one of those owners that was very close to the people as well so very happy to be speaking to him today uh been a while since we spoke uh, uh to you and about you uh, in terms of football nowadays uh people say jimmy and they think just a businessman welcome jimmy great to have you oh thank you Andile, and um Oh man, Timmy's going to have to just uh, take Jimmy back there so we can uh, get a better line on it. The conversation, if you're wondering, why are we speaking to Jimmy? Uh, the rumors are rife uh, that uh, there are two teams for sale in the DSCB Premiership and that Jimmy is interested in one of them. How far has that gone? Have they been conversation at all? What teams is it that he's talking to? And if not, is he interested in coming back to football? I know a lot of people still missing um, Blue for Dan Celtic. You still see Borta in the stands, don't you? Still wearing his green. You know, with the hope and the dream that, uh, and he said this to me before, you know, he passes, he hopes and wishes that one day he'll get to cheer for his beloved again. Uh, we've got Jimmy back now on a better line. Jimmy, thank you so much for joining us. Terribly sorry, that line wasn't so great. Yes, apologies about that. I'm in an area where there's not such great reception. But yes, once again, um, thank you for thinking about me and inviting me to your show, Andile, and it's an honor to be on your show. Well, I mean, I think it's warranted, isn't it? Your name has been coming up a lot over the past couple of months and particularly the last couple of weeks even. But before we even go there, are you still involved in football at all? I mean, I saw you involved in development of football as per Timothy Malobi's article in the City Press. What is Jimmy doing at the moment? Well, I've taken a break since we sold the club, Northern Dane Celtic, in 2014 to Max Chavalala. So we took a break from football for quite some time. Um, we were supposed to start with a junior and the 11 team to take them over to participate in Europe in a couple of tournaments in Portugal and in Italy. That was just before COVID, and COVID spoiled that for us. And then this year in June, we, we well, in, in January this year in Bilfontein, we, we had a tournament sponsored by a local business called Econo Foods. And we invited 10 schools, predominantly from the townships of Bloemfontein, and we selected 14 boys from that tournament of 10 teams. That was at the end of January this year, and we worked with these boys until the first week of June. We trained three times a week with them, sometimes four, and then picked them up on Saturdays for competitive games. At school holidays, we trained every day. And um, in June this year, we flew over to Portugal where we played uh, seven friendly games against Braga Football Club, who are now competing in the UEFA Champions League. I think they were playing last night as well against Napoli. That is Braga from Portugal. We had played seven games against the under-11 team, of which uh, we won three, drew two, and lost two. Jimmy, if you don't mind me and asking, are... who's we? Well, it's myself. My son, Marco Augusti, who is an assistant to Modifi and Seki at the Bloemfontein Celtic development team. And uh, one of the greatest legends in South African football, David Rastaman Modise. Yeah. And what, what, under uh, what banner are you guys doing all of this? Under what brand? Bloemfontein City Football Club. Bloemfontein City Football Club. That's the new entity. That's what you have uh, now started. That is what I've now started, Andile. And like I said, it all started with an invite to go and play in Italy. Um, so we decided to take the kids over first to Portugal for preparation games. And then we flew over to Italy, played in the Grande Cup, which is one of the biggest youth tournaments in Italy every year. Mm. Teams like Atalanta, Atalanta, Cremonese, Porto Football Club from Portugal, Guimarães from Portugal, Juventus, Inter Milan, wow. Roma. They had all... All these clubs had the under-11 teams. There are 28 clubs. We ended up playing six games. We won three, lost three, and got knocked out in the quarterfinals. That means we, we, we reached the last eight. I think it was an outstanding achievement, and it is, an, 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 it is a, an indication of how much talent we really have in this country. We had only been working with these kids for four months. Some of these academies in Europe have had their kids together for two to three years, and yet we competed against these guys. 
And, so and we're very, very proud of our local talent and our, our kids in Bloemfontein. Um, none of these kids had ever been out of the country, um, not even to Lesotho or Swaziland, you know. Mm, I mean, well done, and congratulations <laughs> and yet, to you and the team. Um, and I'm glad that we're seeing all of this. And I think, uh, you know, more needs to be done uh, at that lower level because that's the one thing that everybody speaks about um, as, as, as an enabler to doing well. But I just wonder, why not, uh, you know, starting Bloemfontein City? And I hear you, and it's, it's, it's a nice name, and it rings, and it still keeps that Bloemfontein in it. Um, why not go back to Bloemfontein Celtic? Why not uh, go negotiate to take over Bloemfontein Celtic? They're not in the top tier of football anymore, but the club still exists. Did you ever even consider that, Jimmy? Well, I've spoken to Max Chavalala twice before. Where I tried to buy um, Celtic outright back from him before he sold it to Mamkiza of Royal AM. Um, but we couldn't agree to a price, and he continued continued with the club until he sold it, obviously, in the end to Royal AM. Um, he has now started again this season. He's playing in the ABT Motsepe League mm. under Bloemfontein Celtic. Um, it is something we have considered. But um, we haven't got to that point at this stage. The bug of um, big-time football, I mean, we hear of statuses that are loosely for sale in the DSTV Premiership. Is this something you would consider? Is this something that uh, you would, uh, you know, dive into? I've I've, I've always said, you know, um, my heart will always be in football. Um, Love football with an undying passion. However, at the same time, it's also a big uh, business and a big commitment that you that you got to commit to. I think the mistake that most people do is that you end up buying, you raise the money to buy the status, and then you don't have money to run it from there mm. on. And that's why you find a lot of teams, you find a lot of teams running into financial problems because buying the club is only one part of the deal. The most important part is to sustain it on a monthly basis. We all know that the Premier Soccer League grant cannot sustain a Premier League club on its own. So you've got to delve into your pockets or find sponsorships. But there's no conversations you've had so far. There's no talks with anybody um, no, uh, that you've I had haven't so spoken far. To any, no, I haven't spoken to any team owners, either in the PSL or in the Motsepe Foundation League. No, the NFD, I haven't spoken to anybody at this stage. Well, I mean, Jimmy, it, 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 it's exciting to know, you know that you are doing what you're doing. I mean, at the moment, it sounds like it's, a, um, it's something that you want to grow from the ground up. Yes, we do. And is this now a team, or is this is this a you know something that you're going to take and form into a team to start competing, perhaps in the SAB leagues and find your way up and maybe grow into the DSTV Premiership? Well, what's the bigger plan? Well, well that is definitely an option. Um, as I said, this started off as a once-off, and now we've been invited back to Italy for the coming up uh, 2024 tournament. So in January, again, we'll start off with a new, fresh under-11 group because the international tournament that they present in in Italy, this specific tournament is for under-11s. But then we'll have our under-11 boys, which competed this year, moving over to the under-13 category. So every year we're looking at maybe adding an extra age group. Jimmy, I'm excited uh, for whatever it is that you're cooking down there. And uh, um, uh, I'd love to have a a bigger conversation with somebody who's run a team in the DSTV Premiership, you know, to find out. I mean, we're hearing of, you know, unpaid salaries, left, right and centre, the difficulties of owning a team in the DSTV Premiership. Um, And also just, Swallows, uh, rather, listen to me, Bloemfontein Celtic fans would love to hear from you and would love to reminisce with you. So one of these days, when you do come into Joburg, please give us a call and sit across from us here and let's speak about the good old days. Let's share some memories, but also just drop some knowledge as well. No problem. It will be an absolute honor. Um, and uh, I've always had a fantastic relationship with you, Andile, even though it was not for very long because you came into football and not long after that I exited. You exited, yes. But um, you've always been, you've always given us fair coverage and you've always also been an avid football follower and supporter yourself. So from our side also, we'd like to thank you for your input in South African football. Before I let you go, Jimmy, because th- th- this stays on my mind. Um, I can imagine from where you were to where it is now. How much do you think is a fair amount for a DSTV Premiership side now? What is a fair amount to pay to buy a status now? 
I think the market rate, I think people are talking around about the 50 million mark, 50 to 60 million mark, if you listen to people out in the market. Um, if you, I think a fair amount would be a 30 million. 30 million? Yes. Jeez, you, you drive a, a hard bargain, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> let, me you, let, me, let me put it to you this way, Andy. Lee. <laughs> so if you, if I got 50, 50 million rand and I put it into the bank in a, in, a, in a bank account and a fixed deposit and I get an ten percent interest, I'm making myself five million rand a year. Hmm. So that's a business that's making a good income, four hundred thousand rand a month kind of thing. That's a good business. And now take the same fifty million and invest it into a football club, you get two and a half from the Premier League, you need at least another two and a half from your pocket. So what kind of a business is that? <laughs> Where you invest 50 million rand and you must still put in at least two or three million rand a month from your pocket. Hence, hence I say maybe they're not worth 50 million rand on the market. Jimmy, when you're in Joburg, anywhere, anytime in the new year, all you have to do is say, hey guys, I'm around for these days. Uh, come into studio. We'll definitely do that. Please and thank you. And delay, definitely. The next time I'm in Joburg, I'll buzz you and I'll come and spend an extended time in your studio. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. That is uh, Jimmy Augusto there, former uh, owner and chairman of Bloemfontein Celtic. Uh, let's go straight into the voice notes. I mean, we've taken your time. And as in Zongshai, your calls as well. Zongshai, good day, man. Why are you taking our time? But I think you'll agree that um, those were important conversations that needed to be had. Uh, I don't know about you, but I got a lot from that. I think the one thing that's going to stick out from this conversation is two things in particular. International coaches coming into South Africa. The minimum requirement, if you're an international coach, those that are already here, they are saved. But if you're an international coach coming into South Africa, it means, uh, what was his name to me? Fortloza, Romain Falls, would not have coached in South Africa. But also it means uh, C. Adramovich would not have coached in South Africa with these laws. Because they state, you have to have been a coach at a top tier, so professional level, for five years. In the last seven years, you have to have won a trophy. And you need a minimum UEFA Pro or CAF A license. I don't know how you feel. Can we take some voice notes, please? All right, here we go. Call Metro FM now on 0860-002160. Drop us a voice note on 060-552-7303. Waking up, down two, turned up, two, turned up, two, turned up. Uh, can you please try to explain it better so that I can understand? This thing here is GAG, like I'm calling Abuta Charisanga Hona, Mo, Ari, under 23, Tamil, 40 minutes, and then two. Why is that you would receive? 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 Why is that you would Friday, I know. No, no, no. We can end there. Can't say anything after that. We can end there. No, no, no. We can end there. You know, as a person in life, doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter what your job is. There's nothing like somebody who sees you. Like, I'm born. I'm born. 
ufake traki inu begi daspi ingashe la panu ivale because and you put it where you found it umuta puma te nia bonga back bona lo umuta thank you for seeing us no thank you thank you for seeing us that's the biggest compliment anybody can pay us here just to see us we appreciate you it's ah. after the hour seven. We've got to get out of here. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Remember, two more to go. As you drive home and, uh, you know, um, get your way and uh, begin your route to wherever it is that you're going in Makaya. Hey, we're going to be here with you for the next two days. Pella, pella. That's all me.